So I'm in the woods <laughs> <laughs> with my friend Brian. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, it's Deb, my main gardens. And um, Brian invited me to go mushroom hunting, mushroom foraging. Uh, there are very few people I would <laughs> accept an invitation. <laughs> Let's go out in the woods together and look for mushrooms. But I'm this honored. guy. Honored, completely honored. For sure. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about this. And, and I have to be honest, and this is probably true for you. The idea of, of picking mushrooms in the wild scares me. It intimidates me. I don't, I, I see them, but I'm afraid that I'm going to eat something or that's not good for me or that could hurt me. So um, what advice would you give to us if it's something that maybe we see mushrooms in our yeah. woods or in our, in our gardens and, and we wonder if we could pick them or how do we learn, how do we learn how to do this and be safe? Well, the feelings that you have about mushrooms are the absolute feelings you should have about mushrooms. Okay. You don't want to just willy-nilly grab them and try them. Right. Um, there are only a few that can really hurt you, but there are others that'll make you really quite sick for a while. Okay. Um, it's, it, it, it's a process. When you, when you, when you first start um, picking mushrooms, you wanna go through things called spore prints. You know, once you have a pretty good idea of what it is, you maybe wanna do a spore print and that'll say, white spores okay then it is what I thought it was as opposed to a pink spore and you're gonna use a reference book for that um, very often you just take a small nibble um, that can show you different things there are certain mushrooms that are very peppery and spicy and that's sort of a warning to stay away from that one really um, no mushroom in the world is gonna make you sick from touching them okay no mushroom is gonna make you sick from chewing on them and spitting them out Okay. That's yeah. That, that's when a lot of people worry. Do I have to have gloves to pick them or not? It's just not going to happen. It's it's ha once you ingest it. Um, okay. that, and uh, and again, there's only a couple that'll kill you, but there's some that'll keep you real close to the bathroom for for a while. Instead of just going, oh, look at all the mushrooms, you will say, oh, I want to go find this, this, and this. Okay. And then you start looking at the habitat that they grow in. Mm -hmm. um, the hens of the woods, they always grow on old old oak um, growth. They are, you're going to find them at the base. Uh, porcini mushrooms have a, uh, an affinity for spruce trees. Hmm. They like to grow underneath them. There's very often symbiotic and parasitic relationships that exist between certain mushrooms and certain trees. Wow. So, I didn't oh, know that. It's, it's very com complex. Yeah. Wow. And wow. Uh, certain soils, they got certain times of the year. Yeah, so th we're, in, we're in fall, early fall. Um, is fall... A really good time. Fall is a good time. We have a lot of uh, um, a lot of the larger mushrooms. Again, the uh, some of the hens of the woods will be an individual one could be ten pounds. Whoa! You know, they're, they're, they can be they can be enormous. Um, chicken of the woods is another one that's out at this point. They're they're good size and weight. Um, we try to think of some of the, the black trumpets, not big, but they're they're very potent which is nice, they have a really big flavor. Winter chanterelles are out at this point as well. What's the most common one you'll find in, in Maine woods? Probably the chanterelle. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful little one. It's pretty um, pretty easy to identify, although there is a close look-alike. Uh, oh. The uh, uh, jack, 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 jack um, The yeah. imposter chanterelle? Yeah, yeah, and those, can, those are the ones that can make you very sick. Oh, okay. The, uh, um, but they, and they look very similar. Oh, okay. But again, they grow in different ways. Right. A chanterelle will be individual or a couple, whereas the, the jacks will always be um, a large group of them. A large group of them. Yeah. So do your homework, right? Biggest biggest thing you can do. Yeah. Any other lessons learned or advice? Have somebody else taste them first. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But actually, when you, when you do start tasting a new mushroom, it's usually best to start out with a small amount. Okay. Um, you don't okay. want to, you know, even though you've got 10 pounds of a really good mushroom, ingesting it all at one time, there may be things that, and to tell you the truth, it may upset your stomach, but it won't upset mine. Right, right. So the best way is to start with a small. Same way when you clean a carpet, you want to do a little area first. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good tip. And you want to taste it first. Yeah, okay. Once you know exactly what it is. Okay, so we're going to go out and look now and see what we can find, so find. in the main woods. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs> okay. So what have we found? All right. We happened upon some black trumpets. Black trumpets. Black trumpets. Trumpets of death. They have a few different uh, names, but they're, they're one of the most wonderful, deep, earthy flavored uh, uh, mushrooms you're going to find. They're poor man's trouble. 
for example, the smell of them, once you, once you start smelling them. And the, 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 as we just experienced, the wonderful thing is you're walking along, you won't see them, all of a sudden you see one. And once you've seen that one, they're everywhere. Let's, let's look. They're everywhere. Let's see. Let's look at the one we spotted. Wait, now I lost it. <laughs> Where'd it go? Right down here. Oh, right here. Oh, boy, they're so well camouflaged, though. But oh, you're they, right. They once you, right now you look around, like, oh, look. There's more. Oh, look. Yep. There's. They're over here. They're over here. There's even, there's a great big one over there. I don't know if you can see the. Oh, yeah. Some large ones over that way. I don't want to step on him. Oh, wait, where'd it go? Right there. Right there. Wow. That is, that's one of the most exciting magical things is once you, once that image walks in your mind, they're everywhere. You, you're actually, once you start seeing mushrooms, you're doomed to see them everywhere you go. So, so how do you, show us how you pick them? Oh, these are very simple. You don't need to cut them or anything. These just, you just pick right off. There's very little on the on the bottom. Later on, you know, if you're drying them, you're just going to snip that little piece off at the end. But all they are is a simple pick, a pinch and a pick. You can leave these sitting out in the sun, and they will dehydrate for you. You don't even have to use a dehydrator. Look at those. Those are beautiful. That's very pretty. This is some of them. They'd already grown at one point. Those are some ones that dried off. Died and dried. Look, they're everywhere now. <laughs> wow. Just so, like so tell me again, how do you, what, what do you do with those? Well, these are, these are good in a number of different ways. Uh, they're fantastic, sauteed. Uh, they go great with pasta. They go great on top of a pizza, as a matter of fact. Um, I will dehydrate a lot of them, and then at that point, either reconstitute them later for a, a mixed mushroom th thing, or grind them up into a fine powder, mix them with salt, and you get a really nice finishing salt that way. Sweet. All right. All right. You, you want me to go where? Right down around the front of that tree. And one of the reasons they call it the dancing mushroom, that's what, it's, it's a maitake, they call it uh, the dancing mushroom, because often when you find it, you do a little happy yeah, well okay so we're about what 20 10 15 feet away from it brian and i don't see anything so i need to no. get closer you have to get closer Absolutely. all right we're going down yeah. it's very steep all right i'll i'll run interference so. i can do it got it yeah oh we got an angry bird okay right down around the front of it and maybe it's just on the front of it Oh, hang on. I'm gonna grab onto that tree. Sorry. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh! Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Wow. Aren't they beautiful? You're not kidding about. I can see why you would do a happy dance. Look at those. And that, those are small. <sighs> I've harvested as much as 70 pounds from a single tree. Whoa. All right, I'm gonna hold my hand up next to it so you can kind of get an idea of the size of these. Wow, I'm gonna sit. They, all, they, they generally grow at the, the base of uh, old oaks or uh, old maples. They're not wonderful for the tree. They, they create a little bit of a root rot over the years, but you don't see them until it's a mature oak anyways. Um, what are we looking at? The Mayataki mushroom, in other words. <sighs> Stop it. Head of the woods. Also, uh, Italians refer to them as signorinas. But they're a... Uh, they're beautiful. They're a polypore. You pull the whole thing? Boom. Just <gasps> like that. Oh, my gosh. And you see down here, this this is called a polypore. Mushrooms generally have gills. Yeah. Um, you, uh, the mushrooms that we buy at the store usually have the gills below them. Um, when you get into the polypores, porcinis are polypores. This is a polypore. It has a number of different uh, pores. <laughs> it had an answer term polypore. But, you know, these are, these are beautiful. These are beautiful. These can be eaten as a steak. You wow. can press them. You, you cook them in like a cast iron pan and you press them down and they're meaty, meaty, meaty. They have a nice savory flavor. Um, you can individually take the fronds off 
which is actually Grifola frondosa is the uh, the, name, the Latin name for them. But you can blanch them, marinate them in uh, the same thing that you would marinate beef jerky in, dehydrate them slightly, and it makes a really good vegan jerky. Wow. So how how quickly do, the, do these grow, Brian? Like, when's the last time you checked here? Uh, I probably was here a week and a half ago. Yeah. And it was half the size. Wow. Half the size. Once they get going, and they usually start the end of August or so. Um, yeah. Once they begin, they get, they they grow quite quite readily, and they, these these have put a lot of um, energy into the the size of the the fronds. Some of them will get that big and have all sm very small ones. So is now the good size to to harvest it? This is this, any size is good. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Um, right. This, this is this is a great size. Again, this this is stuff we can press into a, a, into steaks, or it'll make great. Uh, make great jerky because they're, they're big and the fronds, they don't uh, break up as much. That's amazing. Wow. So cool. They are good. They're very tasty. They have a nice, it's not an overwhelming flavor, but it's a very nice savory, savory, savory mushroom. You know, you're eating a mushroom, but it's a, uh, uh, and actually these are probably five times as flavorful as these. Hmm. These are a very intense, strong, strong flavor. These are a nice, milder, um, and again, they're a little peppery maybe, um, but yeah, they make a great, uh, the steak is really kind of surprising. No matter how you cook it, they're still crunchy. That's so cool. They have a nice bite to it. I shouldn't say crunchy, they have a nice bite. They're all Dante. Wow, all right. So now that you we've removed the mushroom, what will happen well, here? Well, what you'll see is this is actually again the mycelium of the uh, of the uh, the hen of the woods. The hen of the woods is what we see is basically the same as an apple on an apple tree. That's just the fruiting body. That's what it's bringing out to reproduce. The rest of the organism is all deep into the tree, into the ground. And um, as a matter of fact, the largest living organism is a honey mushroom that lives in you know, in Oregon. They say it's over 2,500 years old and there's over 1,500 acres. Wow. But it's all underground, the mycelium, mycelium network. So will this regrow then in the, will another? Probably not this year, no. Right, in, right. The same way, in the same way you pick an apple. Okay, got it'll it. will go through its cycle. Yeah. And next fall, there'll be another one here. There so was you'll one here check last back year. here yep. next year, yeah. Yep. Uh, I won't look here in the spring, I won't look here in the summer. It's gonna happen around the end of August. And you know, some, sometimes as late as November, into November. Very cool. So look at the mushrooms I found. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, they're not edible, but they're cool. Made by a local guy. Um, just had to have them. So they're in my garden. And um, thank you for hanging out with Brian and I. Brian had to scoot and I wanna thank him what an experience that was. I learned so much. Um, I, yeah, I learned a lot. I want to learn more about um, searching for mushrooms and what what's edible and what's not. And obviously there's a lot to it. And again, thank you to Brian uh, for taking us out on that adventure. And Brian has a Facebook page called, called Quarantine Kitchen, if you want to check it out. Brian has a long history as um, a well-regarded chef and restaurant owner. And um, you may have picked that up as he was talking about how he prepares the mushrooms that he finds. So at the very end of this video, you will see a photo of one of those beautiful preparations and one of those mushrooms served on a plate. Ah, this was so fun to do. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, thank you for hanging out with us again. And thank you for um, subscribing to My Man Gardens. It's Deb. I'll talk to you later.